I wonder where we'll go after this. Well, back to Cairo, I suppose. I hear one division's gone back already. <laughs> what a hope you've got. It was just the same in the last war. Rumors, rumors, rumors after every big push. We were going to India for a rest. Or Paris for a month with the girls. It never came off. Nothing ever comes off. Hmm. Sergeant Kelly wanted at company headquarters. Right away? I was told to say at the double. Hmm. What's up now, I'd like to know. You haven't been misbehaving yourself, have you, Sergeant? Mind your tongue, Cassidy, my boy, and maybe you'll live to draw a pension. If you ask me, there goes the whole blooming British Army rolled up into one. Yes. I heard the captain saying he practically bribed his way back into active service. After him being retired, too, mind you. What a fool. You'd think at least he'd get himself a cushy job back home at his age. It is, by heavens, it is. What a bit of luck. A night's rest and the mile up before we turn in. Letters from home. Good. Come on, lad, hurry up. The mail. Why are you <laughs> blasting <laughs> Lincoln Park, won't you? Come back here. <laughs> Listen, come on. Here Johnson. Here, 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 Corporal. Oh, Sergeant Marcus. Right here, Corporal. Hill. Here. Corporal. Hi, Dan. Corporal, here's a letter for you. Higgins. Yes, sir. Cassidy. That's me, Corporal. Wiltshire. Here, Corporal. Spence. Here. Here. <clears throat> here, wait, there's a package for you. Popular bloke, ain't he? Signs. Here, Corporal. Mike. Here, Corporal. Bridges. Here, Corporal. Spence. William. Here, Corporal. My son. Your wife certainly won't need a photograph of you as long as he's around. Do you really think so? Most people say he's the image of his mother. A noble Canadian corporal. Always afraid someone will find out what he's thinking about. It's not that. It's just that he's different to us. More shy-like. Anyway, he minds his own bloody business. Well, I like the bloke and I don't care who knows it. He does his job and no nonsense about it. Yes, as long as the sergeant's there to tell him what to do. Well, you'd hardly call him officer material, would you? Cassidy, my son. Oh, my. Ain't he a fine-looking chap? London, October the 24th. Dear Colin, your letters are so few and far between. Where are you? How are you? Are you well? Only last night, Tom Benedict and I were talking about you. He's a war correspondent now and is making quite a name for himself. We talked about the cocktail party you took me to in Chelsea before the war, just after his first book had had such a marvelous success. Remember? I expect a lot of celebrities will be here. Well, there'll be free food and drinks. What's Mr. Benedict like? Really like, I mean. Oh, rather like his book. Highly successful. Would you have wanted to write his book? I'd like to write even a seed catalog that sells 30,000 copies in two weeks. There he is over there. Remember my second chapter? The Prime Minister invited me down to check us for the weekend to discuss the whole situation. A Dickie Mountbatten was going along, of course, and... Colin Spence. Oh, Tom. I've been meaning to ring you about lunch, old man, but I'm afraid they've had me rather hopping. Oh, this is Miss Lee, Mr. Benedict. How do you do? I'm delighted. Uh, you two know everybody, of course. Oh, by the way, that last article of yours was simply top hole, had real thought. I read snatches of it in the plane coming from Moscow. Uh, a cocktail? Thank you. You're, um, in films, aren't you? Oh, no, I'm a pianist. Why? Well, anyone so beautiful usually is. I expect Collins told you we were both on the same newspaper in the old days. Oh, yes, he has. Good old Colin. I tell you, this lad has a head on his shoulders. He means for a provincial. I'm afraid he's a little bit too self-effacing for these times, though. You know, like the good old democracies. Nice, but a little bit too civilized for his own good, eh, Colin? I dare say you're right, though. I never have thought of it that way. Uh, 
by the way, you two aren't engaged or anything like that, are you? No, we're just very good friends. Oh, good gracious, I must run. I'm broadcasting to America in 45 minutes. It's rather a nuisance, but there it is. I say, what about you coming along to the broadcasting studio with me? But we, we just got here. I'd rather like somebody nearby on those occasions to signal me in case I start playing silly tricks or lose my nerve or don't get absorbed. But Colin... Oh, I can't depend upon him. He's far too lenient with me. But it's tremendously important with my book coming out in America. You won't mind, old man, will you? Oh, I suppose not. I won't keep her more than an hour. Uh, now, there's a couple of ideas in this broadcast of mine that I'd like to talk over with you, you know, from a woman's point of view. Uh, the first thing is this, now. Do you think it's a good idea? Barbara Spence. Papa Spence. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Listen, lad, I've got orders. Now, wait a minute, Sergeant. They're going to send us out tonight after promising us a rest. Oh, it's not as bad as that. We'll provide a daylight patrol for tomorrow. Just to look about. Why, oh, yes. Why doesn't the Air Force get the job? Air Force, Air Force. I'm sick of hearing about it. You think the rest of us were just out here on a picnic? This war, like every other war, is going to be won by men on their feet with guns in their hands. And don't you forget it. But from a plane, they could see more in an hour than we could all day. Perhaps, but they miss a lot, too. They go too fast. Check your ammunition and warn your men tonight. Well, you're coming with us, aren't you? You bet I am. I don't suppose you've got any beer from the loving folks at home. No such luck, but I can bring along a tin of pineapple. Pineapple? Hmm. That's about as useful to a man with a thirst like mine as silk stockings to a mermaid. Pineapple. Present, sir. Right on. Here's our orders, lads. We move out of camp south by east. Keep a straight course till we sight the railroad along the coast. Take care to keep out of trouble. We're out to observe and report, not to fight unless... Where's your gators? I purposely left them off. They don't fit properly. Put them on. We may be going into action. If you're due to be killed, be killed properly dressed. From there, we hit a fresh course and go on 50 miles. Then halt, return to camp on a straight line across the desert. That's all. Cook's tour, that's what it sounds like to me. All right, with special summer aids. I don't suppose we shall see a blasted thing. The eye ties are sticking to their camps, and the only Adams I've ever read about do their traveling by night. <laughs> Sensible, too. Only we could think up a patrol like this. If there wasn't a war on, I know what the sergeant ought to do. Post a lookout and let the rest of us take a snooze till the weather cools off. Oh, I don't know. I was thinking there's something rather sublime about the desert in moments like this. Something that strips the mind of superficialities. Makes you think of the important things. Pass the Cunine, Corporal. Cottrell's got a touch of the sun. <laughs> I wonder if Liverpool's changed much. Should be. He's been bombed enough. I'm afraid there's been some mistake. How could there be a mistake? You promised me a good table for two. But can't you give us something? Very well, madam. Just wait, please. the 
best you have. It's the only thing left. But we shan't be able to see a thing. I'm sorry, madam. We're a bit crowded tonight. But they promised you a good table. Why don't you make them give it to you? But if this is the only table they have left... doing hiding way back here. Hello. Oh, you won't be able to see a thing. I had reservations, but there was some mistake. Oh, nonsense. They don't make mistakes here. I hope you made a row. Oh, Colin doesn't like rows. <laughs> Can't say I do either. But I know these people. They'll jolly well take advantage of you every time they can. And it's my birthday, too. Your birthday? Well, that's all the more reason why you shouldn't be stuck back here in a corner. Uh, the boy, send the head waiter to me immediately, will you? Especially if I may say so, since you look so very charming. Oh. Well, please. I'm sorry, sir. I say, look here, what do you mean by telling these friends of mine that you've no decent tables? But, Mr. Benedict, there really isn't any space left. Well, add two more chairs to my table. These are my guests. Very well, sir. We really couldn't think of it, truly. Oh, but you're not, old boy. Definitely not. In fact, you're saving me from a very dull evening with my publisher. You know everybody, of course. Uh, sit here, my dear. Uh, sit there, old man. I don't want you to miss this show. It's really frightfully good. Close to 50 miles, allowing for wheel slippings in the sand and deviations. And we better stop and have a bite to eat. What do you recommend for lunch, Sergeant? Best in the house, my boy. Biscuit, bully beef and tea. Could you make it hot tea, Sergeant? Nothing like a nice cup of hot tea to cool one down. Yeah, I dare say it does. The smoke of a fire might give away our positions. Post your lookouts on that ridge, Corporal. I think I'll have a turn myself. That's the lad. A good NCO always does his share in a bit more of the dirty jobs. The rest of us will have a bit of a nap. Pilcher. Signs. Batro. Me? Give me a hand with this Lewis gun. Oh, Sergeant. The transmitter won't work. Must have bus coming down that big hill after we left the outpost. Can't make it go, eh? Well, sir. Well, I was doing patrols before radio was heard of. Guess I'll still be doing them after it's forgotten. Thank you, sir. Kelly! 
Sergeant Kelly! Hop it, lads. Scatter wide. Keep moving. Don't give them a stationary target. I can see that. Try for the pilot, Pilcher. Right. Cut when you go for the rear gunner. Right. It's the Ivies. Better leave it here, boys. get down there and see what we can do to help. What about them? I don't expect they'll be back, at least not till they reload. Sorry, man. Uh, it's all right. Out of 14. Did you stop one? No, no, a bit of a burn, that's all. Maybe I shouldn't have tried to start the blasted truck. I never figured the ideas would come in so smart. Still, you did get one of their planes, Corporal. Nice bit of work. Yes. And if he hadn't, it never would have crashed into our truck and those men.
Don't do any good to look at that. I've gone over everything. All right, lad. Into the curry you go. There's a hole in the petrol tank. I stopped it up, but I don't know how much petrol we have left. Well, we'll keep going until it runs out. The old gun's finished, Sergeant. Finished? Oh, it must have been a bit of that bomb. Sheared away the ejector and lock and pin clean as a whistle. And all we've got left are the rifles. And the Lewis gun. By the hockey, you're right, and I was going to give you a ticking off for taking it out of the truck without permission. You've only got three drums of ammunition, the rest were in the truck. But there's ammunition in here. A dozen mills bombs. We still have the food that's on our backs. We'll get through. Well, lads, I expect we won't see home tonight. The sooner we clear out of here, the better. Those eight eyes will be coming back. And this time, they'll mean business. Symes, you do the driving. Aren't we better, those poor devils? Don't worry. They'll never miss it. Nasty kind of death. I'm glad I didn't find any of them alive. Maybe they'll turn out to be the lucky ones yet. <laughs> When did you do that? Today. Doesn't fit very well, does it? But I never dreamed you were thinking of such a thing. I wasn't until yesterday. They say the Army's either going to take some weight off me or put some on. I forget which, but I expect it'll look better then. <laughs> Army shoes. Aren't you going to try for a commission? I'm afraid I'll have my hands full being just what I am. But... Somehow you... You seem to talk about the war very much. I never seem to associate it with you. Was it Dunkirk or Rotterdam that got you? Not exactly. Well, do you think they're going to invade us? I don't know what they're going to do. And I don't know how to explain it. In fact, I don't know that I even understand it myself. But, you see, there was a waiter I used to know in Paris. He worked in a little cafe in the left bank called the Blue Monkey. I just happened to drop in there one night. I'd been trying to write all day and it hadn't come off. And I didn't care whether I ate or not. But Joe, at least that's what I always called him. I never knew his real name. Pierre, I suppose. Well, you know how Frenchmen are about food. Well, he kept asking me how I like this and how I like that, and I just kept muttering, mm-hmm. I wasn't paying any attention to what he said. My mind was a thousand miles away. And well, suddenly he got so mad, I thought he was going to throw me out of the place. You know how taxi men are in Paris when they don't think you've tipped them enough? Well, that's the way he behaved, only it, it wasn't the money. It just seems I was a poor, stupid idiot that didn't have sense enough to appreciate good cooking when I tasted it. This doesn't make any sense at all, does it? No, it doesn't. Go on. Well, the long and short of it was, I... I apologized and explained why my mind wasn't on food. It wasn't long before I got him calmed down. After that, I... I got in the habit of dropping in there almost every day. I tell you, Joe was a real person. I used to tell him he was a poet, only he used cherry instead of rhymes. And French to the core. You know? Liberty, equality, and fraternity. They really meant something to him. Although, of course, he didn't talk much about it, except in terms of soup and truffles. Well, I saw Joe yesterday. Here? In a newsreel. I got just a glimpse of him and a crowd of Frenchmen being herded along by German soldiers. Anyhow, suddenly Joe looked right straight at me. He didn't have to say anything. It was all there in his eyes, the whole story. And somehow I... I couldn't get him out of my mind. And this morning I went back and looked at the film again. And suddenly I knew I just couldn't sit around any longer. 
If I did, I'd never be able to look a bowl of soup in the face again. I told you this didn't make any sense. It makes a great deal of sense, Colin. creeps, don't it? It's all this stillness. How would you feel if I told you we were lost? Lost? Yes, sir. Lost in this bleeding desert. Not a blasted thing, not a landmark in sight. Did she have a compass? No good. The needle's busted. They didn't tell the others, but that last bomb gave it to much of a jolt. It's worse than I thought. Three gallons of petrol left in the tank. You know what that means. Finish this trip on foot. Right you are. What about Cassidy? Well, he can ride where the petrol lasts. The only thing we can do is watch the North Star. Move on northeast and hope one of our planes spot us. Maybe they'll get the wind up back at headquarters and send out a searching party. Can I shake him up, Sergeant? Just a minute. You know, if anything happens to me, you're in command. Well, nothing's going to happen to you, Sergeant. I mean, it can't. <laughs> it won't land if I can help it. But still, if I stop a packet, it's up to you to get the patrol back. And that's not an easy job. But I'm no leader. I haven't had the experience to take up a command like this with other men's lives depending on me. I can carry out orders, but I can't give them. I'm just a civilian with a couple of chevrons on my sleeve. Come to think of it, that's what most of us are. Yeah, but it's different with you. You've been in the Army all your life. We've come to depend on you, all of us. The men look up to you and respect you. They know you know your job. I couldn't begin to take your place. Oh, nonsense. I've been watching you, lad. And you're not bad for a wartime educated amateur. You just follow the principles and the fine points of soldiering, and I'll put my mind on dodging the bullets. And we'll get home in one piece. All right. Hop it, lad. Time for your morning exercise. <coughs> Right out, Sergeant. That's as far as you'll go. Well, as a mechanized army, looks as if we're finished. Nothing but a heap of old iron now. Should we smash it up a bit before the ITIs get hold of it, Sergeant? No. We'll take out the carburetor and the distributor. It isn't likely the ITIs will have any spare parts. We'll take them back with us. Maybe they'll send out a party and bring it in. How far we got to go, Sergeant? Well, it's hard to tell. Maybe 60 or maybe 80 miles. But never mind, lad. We can do it. Flying up. Where? Flying close to the ground. I believe it's one of ours. Yes, it is ours. Off with your jackets, lads. Wave away. He probably, he probably only interested in getting home. He never even notices. If we could tell him our troubles in Morse. Never mind. 
Give me port where we are. Proud of that little scratch, aren't you? Can't wait to get home to show it off. See that you don't stop one in the worst place and have to lie on your belly to wave. Oh, he's that pile, Mr. Gentleman. And chocolate. Chocolate, and it makes you thirsty. All right, you needn't have any. What's that? You move, move northeast, but look out for enemy armored car stationary six miles from you on that bearing. Good luck. And I thought we had nothing to do but wait and be rescued. Well, there's no use crying over spilt milk. The only thing to do is to push on northeast the way the pilot suggests. After all, if a rescue party's coming, they look for us in that direction. Ignoring, I assume, the fact there's an armored car? No, but if we're lucky, we'll pass it in the dark. Unless, of course, we sneak up on it and spring a little surprise of our own. There can't be more than six in the crew. Against six of us, what could be fairer? Perhaps if we give them a good shaking up, we could get away in the car ourselves. What did I tell you, Corporal? You have the making of a real soldier. Stick to the army, lad. And listen to me, of course. There's no telling where you'll end up. Well, that's it. Let's bury everything we don't need here, put a net over the carrier and push on. Sentries wouldn't do that, Corporal. Look at the fools, just like I days. And it shows you what bad discipline means. Remember that. We could shoot them from here, couldn't we? In this light, at this distance, with a bit of luck, we'd hit one, the rest would be in that car in no time. We'd never have a chance. No. We've got to surprise them. We've got to crawl without a sound from anyone. Corporal. You and Cassidy go after the sentries. You'll have to belly flop. Yes, Sergeant. The rest of us will go behind that smaller hill and crawl up over the shoulder. Check your time. It's 11 o'clock. You'll be in position before we will. So wait till you hear a shout or a shot, then lay them out. What if they spot us first? Open fire. Wherever we are, we'll go in and shoot them up. You understand the facts? Good luck. Right-hand man, the one with a beard. 
It's a stunning head. It look nice mounted. the sergeant needs us. What happened? Symes had his safety catch off. He slipped and let off around. We still had a long way to go, so we made a dash for it. Any prisoners? No. They stood up and fought it out. Give him credit for that. And us? Poor old Simons. Grenade. Where's the sergeant? He's up there with Cottrell. You'd better have a look. I'll go and collect Simons' paybook and identity disc and that sort of thing. Where'd you get it, sergeant? Grime. Get those sentries? Both of them. You'll be in command from now on, Corporal. And you're in a tight corner. No sense denying that. Don't forget what I taught you. Drive them hard. Watch the water. By the way, how much of it have you got left? Less than a bottle between us. Now remember this. When they think they're done in, there's still a little bit of strength left in them somewhere. You better clear out of this. That fire can be seen for miles. Well, you can't move now. Devil, we will. Corporal Spence, I'm still in command of this patrol. And I'm giving an order. I'm sorry, Sergeant, but we couldn't do that. It's insubordinate. <laughs> All right, lad. If you won't leave without me. I'll move on with the rest of you. You got it all wrong, Sergeant. This gully's good cover. It twists all over the place. Best thing we can do is stay right here till we get a chance to get our bearings. Perhaps you're right. Give the men something to eat. They've earned it. Can I get you something? Nothing to eat for me. And take that water bottle away. Drinking water is the worst thing in the world for a wound like mine. Just lay my rifle here beside me. What for? I want to use it as a crutch when we move on. I'll give it a bit of a cleaning while we're waiting.
What's all that for, Corporal? Short of ammunition? No. Have a go at this brandy. No. And that's the first time I've ever refused brandy. Spoiling my record. Go along now and see to the men. something to make a stretcher with. It's hard work carrying a man on a stretcher. I had to go at it once at the aid post to Brooke. Thought it'd be cushy, but was I glad to get off? <clears throat> Couldn't help but hearing what you chaps just said about the sergeant. I'd like to give you my opinion. Forrest, go ahead. Well, this is war. As we all know, war is cruel. At a time like this, we can't afford to think of the individual, but rather of the good of a greater number. In other words, it's a question of the survival of the fittest. And I think... Wait a minute. What are you getting at? Well, I know it sounds rather... rather beastly, suggesting we leave a wounded man behind. But surely, under the circumstances, isn't it the wisest thing to do? If we go on alone, we can move fast. We may even run into one of our own posts or patrols. Then we can send back for it. One more word out of you and I'll bash your head in. his rifle before I left. Corporal Spence, I always carry a spare clip in my pocket. Best of luck and God bless. I bet he was laughing to himself when he wrote that. He always liked to pull a fast one. That's why he wouldn't eat or drink. He was saving it for us. He was a real old soldier. Not many like him left. A bit rough and hard bitten, but... By Oki, he died like a gentleman. We'll miss him. We better bury him next to signs and clear out of here. we're going. Better than being captured or dying of thirst. Well, this gun's getting heavy. Why don't we stop and rest? Because we're going to finish this trek as quickly as we can, all four of us. Even if it kills us, understand? Good heavens, Corporal. For a minute there, I thought it was the sergeant himself talking.
Sorry, Cole. Look. Real tracks. Means we're getting nearer home. Nearer the eye ties, more likely. I don't suppose any of our lorries have been here lately. If they're eye ties, we can give ourselves up. That's better than dying here. Give ourselves up. I didn't know I had that much strength left. I could crime her for that, you know. Sorry, Corporal. Did I ought to have asked your permission first? I've been wanting to do that for a long time. Give ourselves up. You won't crime Cassidy, will you, Corporal? No, I didn't see it. Cotchell, if you make a song or dance when we go back, I didn't see it, understand? But I don't want to rouse and argue with among ourselves. We can't afford it. Come on, Cotchell, get up here now. No more talk about giving ourselves up. I didn't mean anything. I, I was a bit delirious, so... Okay, we're all that way, but keep your mouth shut. Too hot to work. Besides, this is my first leave. You owe it to me. <laughs> I've broken engagement to be with you, I have you know. Tom? So you know you're not going to be there? Oh, I left him a note. Do you like Tom? I don't know. I never really thought about it. Do you? Oh, he's rather clever and amusing. I should think he'd be very attractive to women. Oh, he is, to a lot of women. So, what's the word dynamic? Oh, he's aggressive, yes. Sometimes a bit too much so. But he seems to know what he wants out of life and how to get it. You know, it's very funny. When I'm with you, we always seem to be talking about Tom. And when I'm with Tom, we always seem to be talking about you. That's because we're jealous of each other. Oh. <laughs> you know, the rivers in Canada are much larger than this. Trees everywhere and hills. You'd like them. I'm sure I would. Have you ever thought of going to Canada to live, I mean? Well, no, not exactly. It's really wonderful. That is, if you want to do something like write or study music. By the way, how is your novel coming along? I'm afraid it's like a horse race, just false start. Do you find it more difficult to put women in your books or men? Oh, I don't know. When I write about a woman, a principal character, I mean, I don't think of her as very different from a man. I mean, I don't try to give her a different psychology. I just imagine how I'd behave if I were a woman, under different circumstances, of course, with her own opinions and with as distinct a personality as I can give her. Oh, I see. Of course, it may be a pretty rotten formula, really. Oh, it's not a rotten formula at all. It ought to make some very good books for you. But I don't think it'll take you very far in real life. You don't? Unfortunately, women aren't just like men. They don't talk like men. They don't behave like men. For instance, when a woman's in love, she's helpless to do anything about it until the man opens his heart first. Oh, of course, she can scheme and contrive to make him declare himself. But the initiative is really with him. That's just one point. I guess it makes a great deal of difference. Or do you think so? Maybe that's what's been wrong. Maybe I haven't given my characters the right point of view. Maybe they've been afraid of too many things. Afraid of what sort of things? I don't know. Did you ever know anybody who didn't like to open a telegram or look at a bill from a tailor or... Wouldn't ask a girl to dance because probably she'd already promised to dance. 
or walks up and down in front of a house trying to make up his mind to ring the bell, or just won't take a good, healthy slice and bite of life because it mightn't taste good. Well, if you have, you've got a pretty good idea of the kind of book I'd write. Should we swim again? Still there. Water. We're saved. Stay down. Suppose it's occupied. But there's water there. We've got to have water. I don't see anybody moving. No trenches or pillboxes. That doesn't prove anything. We've got to be sure. But it's too hot to stay here. We'll go mad in this heat. The sun will be down in a couple of hours. We can wait. You can say that because it doesn't affect you. Nothing affects you. You're not capable of thinking what this means. My mind may not be the sensitive mechanism yours is, Mr. Cockrell. But I can get just as thirsty as you can, and just as hot, too. And I still say we can stick it if the corporal says so. A sort of gully over there with some shade in it. No need to roast ourselves. Come along. Keep down, all of you. The idea is we go call for a drink as soon as it's dark, I eh, Corporal? Thinks the place a blasted pub, doesn't he? Oh, I wish to heaven it was. Do you suppose there's any dates on those palms? Proper chance. It's spring, you fool. Spring? If this is spring, what'll summer be like? There's a big one, too. It looks like they've come to occupy the place. Making a good job of it, too. But why? What do they want with it? It's a water hole, so they always do get control of the water. I tell you, we're finished. We'll all die of thirst. And for what? This desert? I told you it was insane. Not as bad off as all that. There's still a tin of pineapple and a bag of grenades there. Pineapple! You swine! You filthy swine! Keeping it back 
I'm here all dying the first. Watch your front. You're on guard. Keeping you till this evening. all those miles never thought of looking inside. You get him too, Corporal, till the Corporal relayed you. If we'd known where it was, we'd have finished it a long time ago and then be just as thirsty as ever now. What do we do now? I don't know. I've got an idea, but I want a little time to think it over. Yes, I expect so. It's going to seem strange not to be able to see you or talk to you. Well, there's nothing to prevent our writing, is there? No, of course not. How did that, lad? You won't go out till it's all clear. No, I'll wait here. Oh, Tom Benedict rang me up today to say he'd meet us here. He'd be very disappointed if he doesn't get here to say goodbye. Yes, it'll be too bad, won't it? You've been seeing a lot of Tom lately, haven't you? Oh, yes, quite a lot. I should think it'd be very exciting being married to a man like him who's always in the thick of things. Oh, yes, I expect so. Colin. Well? Hello there. Those confounded Jerry's almost prevented my getting here. Look, if you don't like these, you can always chuck them overboard. Thanks. Well, I guess I'd better be going. 
Goodbye, Tom. Goodbye, old man. If you don't mind my saying so, I think you're a bit of an ass going off to war as a private when you might just as well have had a commission. Well, I prefer it that way. Oh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Lots of chaps feel the same way. I expect, really, it's the only comfortable and honorable way to get through this war. Take orders and do your job. Oh, goodbye. What you gonna do? Go down there and reconnoiter. I'll come with you. No, one has a better chance. Look here, Corporal. You don't have to go. We still got a drop of brandy left. We can do without water. And don't be disappointed if I bring these back empty. We want a password and a countersign when I come back. How about Sergeant Kelly? Password Sergeant Countersign Kelly. you knew it's what I'd do if I was still alive and in command. What? Because you knew if you didn't, I wouldn't lie quiet in my grave. That's not it at all. I did this to prove to myself that Tom Benedict was wrong when he said all I wanted was to get through this war as comfortably as possible. Very well, lad. Have it your own way. Watch yourself, man. You want to spoil everything by walking straight into that German post? <laughs> You're not afraid of a jackal, are you? This is crazy. Maybe you ought to slip back now while there's still time. I can always say the Oasis is too well guarded. I've got to get out of here. Oh, don't get excited. Of course you're scared. Never knew a soldier yet that wasn't scared at a time like this. But go on. Stick it out anyhow, lad. But I'm no hero. I'm no leader. I told you that. Depends on what you mean by leader. A leader's not just a man who looks at his watch and takes you over the top. He's somebody you can trust to do his job. Maybe give you a better chance to save your own skin. Prove to Cassidy and Pilcher you're that kind of a man. Wait a minute, lad. You're almost there. Maybe you'd better walk after all. You'll get the job over with quicker. Might be safer, too. 
If they see me crawling, they'll know I'm an enemy. If I'm standing upright, like it's not, they'll take me for one of their own schwinos. them over. It seems a mean trick to kill men in their sleep. If they were awake, they'd kill you quick enough. Throw the first one farthest, then get a decent place under the bushes and pitch the others. In the confusion, they won't know which way to move or fire, and you ought to be able to get away. Aufstehen! Ablösung vor! Aufstehen! Ablösen! Aufstehen! Ablösen! Too late, lad. Better get away from here. The others will be coming back in a moment. Vera! 
Hermann? Ja? Was ist denn? Dummkopf! Warum denn auf Schakale schießen? Verschwendet der Munition! A Jackal. And I thought they were shooting at me.
come back. I remember that tree. It's a jacaranda. Lots of them in Cairo. This is Cairo. How do you feel now? Much better, thanks. That's good. I'll take a temperature. Have I been here long? Be careful. Don't bite it. What's it say? Why? Aren't you inquisitive? I bet I'm not much above normal now. You're doing very nicely. Hello, Corporal. Hello, Cattrall. No, really, you've got to be quiet. I'll only be a moment. What happened out there? Well, it seems that when I threw that grenade, it landed in the ammunition boxes, and that was the end of Jerry. How did we get here? They'd sent out a patrol for us, after all. Fortunately, they saw our smoke and came over to investigate. And Cassidy and Pilcher? A shot from the Heinies got Cassidy. He never knew what hit him. Pilcher's blooming along the hall. Oh, by the way, he sends his congratulations. So do I. What for? The Distinguished Conduct Medal, of course. What rot. They don't give a man a DCM just for saving his own skin. Oh, I don't know. Not bad to be a bit of a hero with a red and blue ribbon on your chest. How'd they find out? Well, I had to make a report. I told them exactly what you did. Besides, they found the bodies and the radio and the plane all smashed up. Of course, I told them that I'd really had very little to do with it, but the commanding officer insisted on recommending me too. Congratulations. Well, after all, we did put up a pretty good show between us. Oh, and there's a long account of it in the Egyptian Gazette. And also the London papers, too, I expect. What? And there's a war correspondent outside who wants to get your story firsthand. Get rid of him. Oh, I say, do see him, won't you? Really, he's terribly keen about it. Okay, send him in. I'll deal with him. All right. There's a cable for you. Just arrived. Thank you. Right in here, sir. Thanks, old man. Well, this is a bit of all right, old boy. Oh, Tom. How'd you feel? All right. Well, well. You were a hero. I could hardly believe it. I was in Alexandria when the report came through mentioning your name, and I came right over. Look, you want my story, don't you? <laughs> Rather. And you do something for me first. I want to send a cable. Okay. It's to Valentine. You know her address. Yes. Say, thanks. I want to marry you. We'll send an engagement ring, love Colin. Oh, what is this, some kind of a joke? I don't expect she'll think so. Well, I'm afraid it's against regulations for me to send this, but um, an orderly will take it, or a nurse. No, it might wait about for days. That won't do. You're a correspondent. You've got priorities. Send it your paper if you want to. Tell them to forward it. Well, I'm afraid you don't know what the censors here are like. I don't care, either. If they want to turn me into a tin pot hero, I'm going to cash in on it. You see, I'm no longer the fellow you knew in London as Colin Spence. I'm another man altogether. 
and a very good one. I had to come all the way out here to meet a tough sergeant named Kelly who was born in a slum and educated in an army camp before I was fit for a woman like Valentine. He's dead now. But he taught me one thing. If I want Valentine or anything else worthwhile in life, I gotta fight for it. That's not a bad thing for a man to find out, is it, Benedict? Or for a nation either, for that matter, to fight. She's sure delirious. Never mind what I am. Go get that cable off. I'll murder you if you don't. I've killed men, you know. Men would make a meal of you. You think I'm joking. But you're not quite sure, are you? I'll remove that doubt. I'm not. Lieutenant. Now on, I'm giving the orders. Of course, darling. 